Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to, to uh, Tuesday, September 8th, 2020. The following meeting uh, is being recorded, recorded by video and audio in accordance with the state open meeting law consistent with the governor's orders, suspending certain provisions on the open meeting law, banning gatherings of more than 25 people. This meeting will be conducted by remote participation. Additionally, all votes taken by the city council during this and future remote meetings will be by roll call vote. If you are calling on a phone, you can press star nine to request to speak on a phone. And if you are watching on a computer or a device, there is a raise hand button that you can tap or press to request to speak. Please use these either of these options during oral communications or the public hearing to be recognized to speak. Uh, in attendance tonight, we have uh, myself, Councilor Blank. We have Councilor Gilman, Councilor McCarthy, Councilor Pett, Councilor Holmgren, Councilor Cox, Councilor Memhard, Councilor Nolan, Councilor O'Hara, and uh, did I forget anybody? Councilor McCarthy. I think I got everybody. All righty. Um, Madam Clerk, can we have the next order of business, please? First order of business is oral communications. <clears throat> uh, during oral communications, the public shall have the opportunity at every, every regularly scheduled meeting to be heard under oral communications on matters not appearing on the agenda. Oral communication shall be allowed to any resident who has a request or a complaint of any nature relative to city business to appear before the city council to state their problems without debate. The matter shall be referred to the proper agency through the office of the mayor. Um, can we mute everybody who's not muted, please? Um, the resident will be notified within two weeks prior to Period relative to disposition of same and a copy shall be forwarded to the city council. Person speaking under oral communication shall be limited to three minutes each. The council president shall not allow complaints as to individual performance. Is there anybody that would like to speak under oral communications? Uh, Ms. Boucher, can you hear me? I can, thank uh, you. Marianne Albert Boucher, 93 Mount Pleasant Avenue. Um, every taxpayer in the city should know how much the secondary water treatment plant is going to add to our tax burden. The CFO, when asked what the cost would be, said not going there, it's going to be a burden. Coming to you soon will be a loan request for a water flood mitigation project to build a protection wall around the entire treatment plant. And another 4.2 million before you for items without a full price tag. It's time to pause, reevaluate before none of us can afford to live here in this city. Um, I know a lot of you here tonight are in regards to land disposition, which I'm not supposed to talk about. Um, we have been kept in the dark in a lot of this. And the, and the taxpayers and the citizens of this city should know exactly what's going on at all times. A full price tag should be known is it 4.2 for everything for our schools or is it 4.2 for some of the projects for our schools? We demand to know the full price tag for these projects. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, is there anybody who would like to speak under oral communications? Um, Pamela, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Name and address for the record, please. Pam Steele, 10 Pilots Hill, Gloucester. Hi, can I speak now? Yep, 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 go right ahead. Thank you very much. I would just like to ask you, and I've asked it before, but I never received a letter in response, but that's okay. I'm gonna ask it every time I can. Uh, you will all be retiring at some point in your lives. You think you will have enough money, and no matter what you do, because of what's happening in Gloucester, you will be gone as me and my friends will be gone. I don't know if you can do anything. I'm a fan of capitalism. I've benefited from it. But it just doesn't seem right that nobody ever wanted to come to Gloucester. And now all of a sudden from COVID and people who have money and can't put it in the bank, they want to buy up our town. And I feel it's being sold off. And I'm just asking. I've worked my whole life more than one job at a time. Four generations, Saney and School, BU, I've done my thing, haven't wasted money, and I can see my days are numbered. 
I don't know if there's anything you can do. I would just like you to think about it because you will be me and my friends at some point and you'll be very sad to leave. This is the most beautiful place that anyone could ever live and people still have values. So even though there's tons of money that you can turn over with all this craziness, a three bedroom, two bath, nothing house for a million cash, one by one they're being plucked out. And I just hope you could think about people like me. We have 10% higher percentage of seniors than the state average. You're gonna have to pay for us people. I mean, I'm not gonna qualify because I won't, but I'm probably like $2 over the limit. But there will be people who aren't as fortunate as I've been, who will be gone quicker than I'll be gone. And if they're not gone, you're gonna to have to subsidize them. But I suppose with the extra million dollars in taxes on these million dollar properties that are overpriced, you'll have enough. But that's something to think about. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to listening to the rest of the meeting. Thank you, Pamela. You're welcome. Uh, is there any else, anybody else like to speak on oral communications? Oh, don't even tell me, no, Denise. All right, I'm gonna move you, Mary Ann. Um, Luis, are you there? Hello, Luis? I think it's Louise. Louise, can you hear me? She's on mute. Let's see if I can unmute her. I can unmute her. All right, well, I will come back to Louise. All right, um, Patty, can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right. Who's this, Patty? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Patty. Name okay, and address. Okay. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, I'm Patty Amaral, 14 Myrtle Square. Our greatest gift is open space. Our greatest gift is fresh air. Our greatest gift is clean water. Our greatest gift are trees. Our greatest gift is our earth. And together, we can save it, we can breathe it, we can drink it, we can hug it and protect it for our future generations. Will you be the city council that will help to save our open spaces? I leave you with this. Oh, hold on, Patty. Something happened. Patty, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, we, we lost you with, I'll leave you with this. I'm sorry. Okay. There you go. A, a society is defined not only by what it creates, but by what it refuses to destroy. John Sayhill, please think when you're taking these open spaces away, I'm going to have a grandchild in November. I want my grandchild to be able to play in an open field not on a 60 by 90 turf area. Please think, think, close your eyes and think what you're looking at. Well, when I, I've said this before, when you're looking out your window, I know I'm blessed to look at the Emerald Forest that I'm gonna be talking to Barry about tomorrow and walk in my neighborhood to save things. Don't destroy, please save, thank you. Thank you, Patty. And congratulations on being a grandmother. <clears throat> All right, Luis, can you hear me? You are um, you are on mute, so you have to unmute yourself. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, we still can't hear you. Oh, there you are, Luis. Can you hear me? I'm not. I'm not getting her. I see she's on mute, but I'm not getting her. All right. I have no communication. I, she's not on mute and I can't hear her and I'm not sure if she can hear me. So um, <clears throat> we're going to move on because we've been trying this person for a few times here. Um, all right, Madam Clerk, can we have the next order of business, please? 
The next order of business is the consent agenda. All righty, counselors. Is there anybody who would like to remove anything from the consent agenda? All right, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda as is. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. I am going to call the roll call. Councillor Cox? Yes. Councillor Gilman? Yes. Councillor Holmgren? Yes. Councillor LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor McCarthy? Yes. Councillor Memhard? Yes. Councillor Nolan? Yes. Councillor O'Hara? Yes. And Councillor Pat? Yes. Motion to approve the consent agenda passes on a roll call vote of nine in favor, zero opposed. Uh, we do have a unanimous consent agenda. Was there anybody that would like to remove anything from the unanimous consent agenda? All righty, Councilor Gilman. Thank you, Councilor. Yes, I'd, I'd just like to remove the matter that's on the unanimous consent agenda. All righty, is there anybody else? All right, Councilor Cox, I mean, uh, Councilor Gilman, I'm sorry. Thank you, Councillor. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure that the public is duly um, aware that this particular matter on the unanimous consent agenda is um, um, specifically about referring to P&D, the land disposition committee recommendation for 11 Webster Street. And behind that, um, which you can get on the city website, is seven pages of very helpful documentation and that's what is being referred. That documentation includes addendum to the mayor's report, a recommendation from the land disposition committee, a letter from the DPW and chap the chapter 152 vote of um, Governor Baker of July, the end of July of this year. So I just wanted to make sure that we were all duly aware of what that packet entails because sometimes a, on a unanimous consent agenda that comes at the last moment, um, you know, I mean, this is going to P&D and it will be in front of the full committee. So it's, um, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone was duly aware. So um, I move to accept the unanimous consent agenda as noted. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I will call for the roll call. Councillor Cox? Yes. Councillor Gilman? Yes. Councillor Holmgren? Yes. Councillor LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor McCarthy? Yes. Councillor Memhard? Yes, and thank you, Val, for the clarification about that. Councillor Nolan? Yes. Councillor O'Hara? Yes. And Councillor Pat? Yes. Motion to accept the consent, the unanimous consent passes on a motion of a roll call vote of five, nine in favor, zero opposed. All right, thank you, Councillors. Madam Clerk, next order of business, please. Next order of business is the Budget and Finance Standing Committee report of September 3rd. All righty, Councillor Cox. Hi, everyone. I present a unanimous consent agenda for your review. If anybody would like to pull anything off of that, um, please do so now. Seeing none, I move the Budget and Finance consent agenda. Thank you. Uh, seconded. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Thank you, Councillor Cox. Um, I will call for the roll, Councillor Cox. Yes. Councillor Gilman. Yes. Councillor Holmgren. Yes. Councillor LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Mac McCarthy. Yes. Councillor Memhard. Yes. Councillor Nolan. Yes. Councillor O'Hara. Yes. And Councillor Pat. Yes, and congratulations to the fire department for their uh, these wonderful grants that they're um, getting. Yes, thank you, Barry. Um, motion to approve the unanimous consent agenda, budget and finance unanimous consent agenda passes on a unanimous roll call of nine in favor, zero opposed. Thank you, Councilor Cox. Thank uh, you. Madam Clerk, next order of business, please. Um, next order of business is the ordinance and administration did not meet on August 31st, would be the planning and development standing committee of August 2nd. I'm, I'm sorry, September 2nd. All right, Councillor Gilman. Nope. Councillor Gilman, is there nothing, nothing for PND? Nope, everybody's uh, on mute. 
So, sorry, there's nothing official um, from that um, meeting, but I just wanted to remind city councilors that as a result of that meeting, we are prepared to have a site visit at 170, 170, I think, um, the Atlantic Road this coming Friday, which is September 11th. Um, there'll be one session at five, one at 5.30 and one at six. And the abutters um, were duly notified. I know that uh, attorney um, Ellison sent out a notice on Friday and, um, and most of the abutters were on the call last um, at that meeting. So I just wanted to make sure that any counselors that are um, interested in signing up, I know I've heard from about five of you already. So thank you. The rest of you just let me know if you're gonna be coming so then we can make room for as many abutters as possible. So thank you. Thank you, Verification that th that's 163 Atlantic Road, formerly 171. All right. Thank you, Councilor Memard. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for the clarification, Scott. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, we have the next order of business, please. The next order of business is the ONA minutes of uh, February 3rd, 2020. We got an amendment to the Gloucester Code of Ordinances, Section 10 87. Have a master patrol details to correct the motion due to a Scrivener's error. All righty. So um, basically, Joanne just summed it up. We had a Scrivener's error on the um, the February 3rd, 2020 meeting of uh, Ordinance Administration and also on the 225 2020 meeting on the City Council minutes. Um, the we, we voted in a flat fee of $57 an hour and it should have been $75 an hour. And I'm just really surprised that nobody caught it. But um, this is what we're doing, taking care of some old business. So I will read the motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion to amend the Ordinance Administration Committee meet minutes of February 3rd, 2020 on page five to correct a skip Scrivener's error in regards to the amendment to the Gloucester Code of Ordinances, section 10-87, Harbor, Harbor Master Patrol Details, subsection C, subsection four by striking uh, quotes, a flat fee of $57 an hour, end quote, and inserting quote, a flat fee of $75 an hour, end quote, and I so move. Second. All right, so does everybody understand what we're voting on? All right, pretty basic. I uh, will call for the roll. Councilor Cox? Yes. Councilor Gilman? Yes. Councilor Holmgren? Yes. Councilor LeBlanc? Yes. Councilor McCarthy? Yes. Councilor Memhard? Yes, I'll vote for that. Councilor, uh, Councilor Nolan? Yes. Councilor O'Hara? Yes. Councilor Pat? Yes. Motion to amend the Scrivener's error uh, passes on a roll call vote of nine in favor, zero opposed. Uh, we have one other item under the same motion, uh, under the same item. And um, I'd like to make a motion to amend the Gloucester City Council minutes of February 25th, 2020 on page 13 and 14 to correct a Scrivener's error in regards to the uh, amendment to the Gloucester Code of Ordinances, section 10-87, Harbor Master Patrol Details, subsection C, subsection four, by striking a flat, quotes, a flat fee of $57 an hour, end quote, and inserting, quote, a flat fee of $75 an hour, end quote, and I so move. Second. All right, moving second, and same thing, everybody understand? All right, I will call the roll, Councilor Cox. Yes. Council Gilman? Yes. Council Holmgren? Yes. Council LeBlanc? Yes. Council McCarthy? Yes. Council Memard? Yes. Council Nolan? Yes. Council O'Hara? Yes. And Council Pat? Yes. All right. Motion to, to correct the uh, City Council meetings of minutes of 225 uh, passes on a roll call vote of nine in favor, zero opposed. Um, Madam Clerk, before we do the next order of business, um, you know, I'm not going to take these out of, out of out of order, but we do have 99 Essex Avenue and Atlantic Road. These are both going to be continued. So anybody here to listen for those this evening, um, those are going to be continued out um, till October 13th if they get a uh, 
if everything goes, um, they're probably going to be continued out and then continued again until they go to planning and development. So anybody here waiting for those public hearings, they are not going to be heard tonight, but we're going to move right along with this pub these next public hearings. Um, no, Madam Clerk, we have the next order of business, please. The next order of business is the first public hearing, public hearing 2020-024, tax increment financing TIF agreement between the City of Gloucester and Heffering Engineering. All righty, so I am going to open the public hearing and ask if there is anybody that would like to speak in support. Um, Council President, Mayor Taken would like to say a few words. Madam Mayor, absolutely. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you so much for this. And uh, we're excited that the Heffern Engineer is making this investment in Gloucester. We look forward to supporting them and excited. 60 new jobs could be coming to the city of Gloucester within a few years. The ocean glider technology is exciting to Gloucester because we believe that many of the uses will benefit our community in years to come. From the mapping of the ocean bed to testing the waters of the US Navy, this is something that will create opportunities to our community. We'd like to thank the CEO, Mr. Adel, pronounced as Atley, I'm sorry, because like Safathi or Romeo Taken, sir, but I'm sure by that time and by the time you come to Gloucester, we'll know each other's name very well. And also, um, Ms. Frida Zeppin, we're working very close with um, Jill Cahill, our Community Development Director, and Sal Stefano. I want to thank them too, and I look forward to having them become partners and also um, to help the state. We're going to go through the state and hopefully that the state will also continue this and be able to assist them because we're looking forward as you know as the waterfront's changing things are changing this is just going to help and give an investment to our blue economy we keep telling the waterfront and the fishermen that we believe in them and we want to exist and this is a way that we can say the blue economy our waterfront will say waterfront so uh, i look forward to this partnership and i hope the city council can also you know how i was in my past as a city council i hated tips but sometimes tips are needed in order to give the initiative for the company to actually uh, become part of our partners. And I want to thank you. All righty. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to speak in favor? Councillor uh, Sal Stefano, uh, if I may proceed with my presentation, unless anybody else wants to jump in. All right. Go, go right ahead, Sal. Feel free. Great. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the City Council. The mayor covered a lot of ground and, and you could hear the passion from her voice as always in support of economic development and especially um, on our working waterfront. So today for your consideration on behalf of the mayor and, and the TIF committee, we would like to present Heffering Engineering. Uh, today I'm also joined by Maria Stefano, who's the regional director for the Mass Office of Business Development. Um, and as you know, uh, the MOBD um, EACC uh, committee actually approves our TIFs, um, even if they're what they call local only. Um, but the state, as the mayor mentioned, has been a great partner in trying to find whatever support possible uh, for this company. So a uh, little bit about Heffering Engineering. Uh, we're, as the mayor mentioned, we're joined by Atlee Lorman, who is the CEO, and uh, partner Frida Zifta, who, is it, who are going to do a brief presentation for us today. But uh, we're really excited because they're looking to go into um, 417 Main Street, which uh, those of you who know, uh, that's the building where both GMGI and the new company, LifeMine, are located right on our waterfront. And um, they have a really exciting piece of technology which they're going to talk about, which is an ocean glider. So this device goes underwater and could do everything from mapping the um, seabed floor, as the mayor mentioned, to helping the Navy listen uh, for enemy uh, watercraft. Uh, it could test salinity, it could help with fish counting. But one of the things that really came through when talking with Atlee and Frida is, um, you know, they really were looking forward to working with our local uh, fishermen um, to, to help them test these devices, to work with them. Um, and they've also spent a lot of time in Gloucester visiting. Uh, we were in competition from uh, multiple communities that would like Heffering to expand um, in their community. And, you know, we're hoping that they'll make Gloucester their home. And when they do, uh, they're hoping to bring 60 jobs um, to the area. And so many of these jobs are blue collar jobs. 
uh, for folks that are actually going to assemble these devices. And um, they're going to talk about that briefly. But what we're doing today is we're proposing a five-year TIF agreement um, with um, percentages that will start with a 90% discount on the TIF in year one on the increment, 80% in year two, 70% in year three, 60% in year four, 50% in year five. Um, so those of you who know we're not giving up any existing tax revenue, this is merely a discount on the extra value that will be created after Heffering Engineering makes a significant investment. Our goal is that they expand um, to even more space um, in Gloucester and continue to make it their home. Um, but we're really excited about this, this investment. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, excited about not only the jobs, but the, the type of business this is on our working waterfront. And I wanted to thank members of the TIF committee and, and, and Jill and, and Gary and John Dunn and Steve LeBlanc, Kenny, everybody, uh, Chip, um, Vanessa, this has really been a team effort, you know, headed by the mayor that she really wants this to happen. But um, without further ado, um, I'd like to turn it over to Atlee and Frida um, if they would like to um, offer a brief presentation to us to talk about their very interesting um, invention. So uh, guys, take it away. Okay. Thank you, Sal, and thank you everybody for having us this evening. Um, I'm trying to share my presentation, but it says host disabled participant screen sharing. So I think I need some, some permissions from somebody. And Joanne, can you allow her to uh, share her screen, please? All right, let's see, there we go. All right, we, we, we can see it. Oh, that's not mine, I think that's, Joan's screen. Oh, Joanne. All right, hold on, Joanne. <clears throat> Joanne, can you hear me? All right. Yes, I am trying to do that. Hold on a minute. It looks like Atlee's joining us from the Bahamas right now. <laughs> it does look like yeah, that. I picked out a shirt this morning to go over the background. <laughs> all right, Frida, I think you should be all set. Okay. Yeah. Yep, there we go. Okay. Okay. Can everybody see that? Um, Not yet. <clears throat> I'll try it again. Okay. Now? We're getting there. There we All go. right, we go. here we go. We got okay. you. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so yes, again, thank you. Thank you for having us. We are uh, Heffering Engineering, and the project that we're working on is producing a vehicle called an ocean glider, like Sal mentioned. This vehicle swims in the ocean and carries various sensors to observe subsea properties important to science and operations. So, for example, salinity, fish populations, or listening for other vehicles. So some current applications for this data include navies for battle space awareness. Uh, the data is also used by climate scientists and oceanographic modelers. It's used for weather prediction, for fish stock assessments. Um, these types of vehicles are widely used by the US Navy, several branches, branches of NOAA, many universities with large research programs and similar institutions around the world, such as the Department of Fisheries and Oceans in Canada, the National Oceanographic Center in the UK and so on. There are currently four other manufacturers of this type of vehicle. There are, they're located in Seattle, San Diego, Cape Cod, and one in France. We aim, however, to build one that is significantly lower in cost and less complex to use so that we can expand this type of measurement out to more people, make this more accessible to more researchers and in larger volume so that we can expand the reach of these observations. So right here, if this video plays, let's see. Um, 
It's a short video showing an early prototype of our glider just to give you an idea of how this moves through water. So gliders use buoyancy engines to move through water rather than propellers and thrusters like AUVs. So this means they can complete much longer missions and collect data over longer ranges without power limitations. So it's not uncommon for a glider mission to go six months and collect information over very large segments of the ocean. Um, so Heffering Engineering, a little bit of background, is partly owned by a Norwegian oceanographic sensor company called Nortec AS with headquarters in Oslo and then a U.S. subsidiary located in Boston. So as an organization, we have decades of experience putting technology in the ocean. Uh, so this type of development, as well as common founders. So we've secured $4 million for the development and initial production phase. And once our prototype goes into production, we anticipate five-year international revenues of approximately $20 million per year, with about 30% of this coming from the U.S. market. So this year, though we're not yet in production, we have secured a small amount of revenue from a phase one SBIR in support of producing explosion-proof sensors uh, for the Navy submarines. So this is to give you an idea of our five-year local workforce plans. Ultimately, these include building out a production facility as well with 60 employees with growth plans as outlined in this slide. So these are what we hope are well-paying jobs with competitive benefits packages. So why are we considering Gloucester? We've been scouting out several locations for this project, both within the state of Massachusetts, but also other locations close to key customers and partners. So among those are the Gulf Coast, specifically the town of Gulfport, Mississippi, also Southern California, the DC area, um, all places that have strong Navy and NOAA ties along with the relevant research and scientific communities. We like the idea of being close to our Boston hub, Nortex Boston hub, and, um, and being able to leverage those resources. And Gloucester could fulfill all the practical requirements for development, testing, and attracting top talent. So some of these things that we're looking for are, are a, a working waterfront with quick access to deep water for testing and deployment of the vehicles, um, but also vessels of opportunity. So these are small man portable vehicles that can be deployed from small fishing boats. Uh, so partnering with fishermen to put these out in the water would be advantageous for us and, and really help out with our testing and development efforts. We also, of course, want to attract top talent. And so we need an attractive place to live um, and with affordable housing for young professionals, for small families that starting out, uh, but then also the appealing quality of life that goes to it. Uh, we're, uh, some of the people that we're attracting from other states really aren't accustomed to sharing a, a small apartment with four other people in Boston. So we want a place where they can spread out and enjoy nature and all that it has to offer. So with that, that's, that's my presentation. Again, thank you for your time this evening and thank you also for your consideration. All right, Frida, thank you. I'll just wait for you to stop sharing your screen. We'll get back into this meeting. Sorry, tried to do that okay. last time and I had, I had problems with that for some reason. Sorry. Frida, while you're doing that, would Atlee like to say a few words? Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, well, Atlee, you're muted. Atlee, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, no, I think I think we have looked. We've all, we've been looking for almost a year to find out where we would put our production location because the, the big thing about it is that once you put that in somewhere, you're really stuck there in a way. So it has to be a good choice. Um, and I think once we came to Gloucester and saw what the waterfront and sort of the general atmosphere of the city, we were we thought this would be a really good place. As, and I for all the arguments that that Frida made, so we totally look forward to to, to coming to Gloucester developing our business there and working with the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to speak in favor? All righty, seeing none. Um, this is a public hearing. We have, a, we have 11 attendees this evening. So any of the attendees, if you would like to speak in favor, if you're calling in on a phone, you need to press star nine. And if you are using a device, there is a raise hand button. So if you'd like to speak in favor or opposition of this. Alrighty, seeing none. Uh, is there anybody that would like to speak in opposition of this? Alrighty, seeing none. 
Madam Clerk, are there any communications? There are none. Are there any councilor questions? Councilor Peck. Yes, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. President. Uh, uh, and um, to Heffern, uh, Heffern, uh, thank you for uh, choosing Gloucester. Uh, I just have one question. Obviously, um, even though your um, product is not unique, you talked about other um, that do similar types of things. Uh, you also talked of one of the primary and one of your first um, uh, uses for this is with uh, the Department of Defense of the United States Navy. And I'm just wondering how, uh, how that works and do you, if you have communication with the Department of Defense about, uh, you know, um, sharing this, you know, worldwide with other, um, other uh, governments, uh, military, et cetera, what, you know, how, how does that type of protocol work in uh, the business you are in? I'm not, you know, I'm not familiar with it. I just don't know if you can answer that question or if you just give us a little insight. Thank you. The, the ongoing use of these types of devices with the military is really I, what I would call the civilian branch or civilian part of the military. Um, it goes to things like models, worldwide models of how the ocean moves. Um, it's a fairly benign part of the Navy, so it's not, um, it's not really limited by the type of secrecy and those types of things that a lot of other more uh, more warfare-like activities is. So this is this is a part of the Navy, kind of like the Army Corps of Engineer. You can sort of imagine that not not everything they do is, is super secret and, and 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 super dangerous. So I think in the effect on on the activity that we're going to have is going to be minimal relative to secrecy uh, limitations and things like that. Sorry, Councilor Gilman. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. So I have a question for Mr. Lorman and Ms. Um, Zifte. So how can you give us a feel for how you might be collaborating with organizations already in Gloucester, like GMGI, Maritime Gloucester, UMass Marine Station, because uh, this, this technology is really intriguing and um, I, I'm just interested if you have any thoughts on how you will just kind of um, stay connected to our city um, because what you're doing is so fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. Frida, do you want to answer that? I can, I can, I can take a stab at it. Yes. Uh, right now, our, our, we need a product first. So our first, uh, our first uh, staying connected will be to, to have lots of conversations on how they can utilize this. One of the things I mentioned was really the ability, uh, one of our goals is to be able to put this type of technology in more more people's hands. And right now the types of, of research institutions that, that have these are, you know, Scripps, Woods Hole, Oceanographic, with these, you know, large research vessels, large programs. It's it's really out of reach for universities like UMass. So I think, you know, speaking with those with those people, seeing what kind of work they're doing and then how we can we can help out with that. Even later on, even before this is developed with our current types of oceanographic instrumentation would be very interesting to us. Uh, we like we like local partnerships. We uh, we do uh, we we have customers uh, right now is Nortec in Boston, at BU Northeastern, um, UMass, uh, Boston. So so we do uh, we do try and, and work with our local community in that way. And and at, at Gloucester specifically, there is the NOAA offices that are there um, that are typically right. collaborating partners for sure. I've left them out. Thank you so much. That helps. Appreciate right, thank, it. Thank you, Councilor. Is there any other Councilor questions? All right, seeing none, um, I will close the public hearing and ask for the committee report. Hello, everybody. All right, I'm going to make a motion. Um, I recommend to approve a tax incremental increment financing exemption between the city of Gloucester and Heffrain Engineering in accordance with Massachusetts Economic Development Incentive Program and Chapters 23A, 40, and 59 of the Massachusetts General Laws to be located at 417 Main Street for a term of five years ending in fiscal year 2026. Uh, 
And I so move. Second. All right, motion's been made and seconded. Does everybody understand the tip? All righty, I will call for the um, roll call. Councillor Cox. Yes. Councillor Gilman. Yes. Councillor Holmgren. Yes, and thank you for testing the waters with us. Thank you. Councillor Blank. Yes. Councillor McCarthy. Yes. Councillor Memhard. Yes, and as a waterfront business, we welcome you to Gloucester. We hope it all works. Thank you, Scott. Councillor Nolan. Yes, and thank you for choosing Gloucester. Councillor O'Hara. Yes, yes. And Councillor and Councillor Pep. Yes, and welcome to the very beginning of Ward Two. Yep. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Um, motion passes on a, a roll call vote of nine in favor, zero opposed. Um, congratulations, guys. If there's anything you need. Um, Whoa, you, breaks, oh, Steve. Oh. We have one more motion. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Councillor Cox. And this is for consideration. This is not a uh, consideration of moving to Gloucester. Um, I recommend that the City Council accept the following. One, adopt the tax increment financing agreement between the City of Gloucester and Heffron Engineering for property located at 417 Main Street. Number two, approve the project application and find that it meets the requirements of Mass General Law Chapter 23A, Section 3F, and that it provides a reasonable opportunity to create jobs within the City of Gloucester as indicated in the TIF agreement. Three, authorize the mayor to execute the TIF agreement and submit the TIF agreement and the certified project application and all other necessary documents to the Economic Assistance Coordinating Council of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and take any other action as necessary and appropriate to implement the provisions of those documents and I so move. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Does everybody understand the motion? All right. Um, Councillor Cox. Yes. Councillor Gilman. Yes. Councillor Holmgren. Yes. Councillor LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor McCarthy. Yes. Councillor Memhard. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Councillor uh, Nolan. Yes. Councillor O'Hara. Yes. Councillor Pett. Yes. Motion passes on a roll call vote and nine in favor, zero opposed. Is there anything else, Councillor? Nope, that's all set. All right. Uh, once again, uh, congratulations, guys. If there's anything you need, uh, please reach out to Community Development, Sal, Jill, um, everybody up there will give you a hand and um, be sure to reach out to the city council. All the city councils are here to help you with anything you need, any guidance, um, try to get a, a seamless, um, get you into the community as seamlessly as possible. So uh, we're looking forward to it. So congratulations, everybody. Thank you. Thank and you very much. much. Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, counselors. <laughs> All right, Madam Clerk, we have the next order of business, please. Next order of business is public hearing 2020-011, Special City Council Permit 2020-003, Atlantic Road number 163, formerly part of 171, map 73, lot 41, a portion of former, lot, of former map 73, lot 26, Gloucester zoning sections 1.8.3 standard to be applied, um, 3.1.6B building heights in excess of 35 feet, which has been amended. 3.2.2 foot no eat dimensional requirements for multifamily dwellings and their accessory uses other than signs. Reduction in distances between buildings 2.3.1 subsection 8 conversion to a new multifamily or apartment dwelling, seven or more dwelling units. Section 5.7.5 special permit criteria for major project and 1.10.1 uh, subsection A, subsection 1, subsection 2, jurisdiction of the City Council, and the R-20 low medium density residential district. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Um, I'm going to open the public hearing and continue this until October 13th, 2020. Uh, Madam Clerk, next door to business, please. Next order of business is public hearing 2020-010, Special City Council Permit 2020-002, Essex Avenue, number 99A, map 216, lot 126, Gloucester Zoning Ordinance, section 1.8.3, standard to be applied. 
section 3.1.6 B, building heights in excess of 35 feet, section 2.3.4, subsection 13, marine related service storage or repair limited pri primarily in the MI district to commercial fishing vessels, section 5.5 lowland requirements, section 5.5.2 and 5.5.3 in the EB district. Thank you. I will open the public hearing and continue this to October 13th, 2020. Um, next order of business. Is council request to the mayor. Alrighty, so I'm going to go in no particular order. I'm just going to go from left to right on my screen. So, Councillor Pat. Nothing? Nothing. Thank you. Alrighty, Councillor Cox. Trying to figure out how to unmute myself. Sorry. Um, if <laughs> It seems like, you know, four weeks ago that we talked about having the Traffic Commission meeting again. So, um, Oh, wait, it was four weeks ago. Uh, can we please get moving on that? It would be great. Thank so, you. Council thank you. I'd just like to recognize that we passed a Labor Day weekend and a schooner festival and a mayor's reception at the schooner festival with none of the above. And it's a, it's a sort of sad note as Labor Day goes by that uh, 2020 has uh, been so different than we're used to and enjoying here in Gloucester. Thank you all. Thank you, Scott. Council Holmgren. I don't have anything this evening. Thank you. Thank you, John. Councilor McCarthy. Uh, no request for the mayor, but um, my morning walk this morning on Good Harbor Beach, the, the lifeguards have gone. I just wanted to say thank you for all the uh, the summer help that, that pitched in and, and made our beaches and our, our parking lots and, and uh, all around the city safer and, and cleaner. And so that's it. Thank you, John. Uh, Councilor O'Hara. Thank you. I just want to mimic what, what John just said about the lifeguards and everyone, all the city employees who participated in making Gloucester a successful summer and the mayor who worked real hard at bringing some normalcy to, to Gloucester and obviously many other visitors who came into our community to enjoy the beauty of Gloucester. So thank you again to all the employees. I want to reach out and thank the clerk's office for a su successful primary uh, with virtually limited, if not uh, no complaints, uh, obviously in a time that we're going through, I think they did a, a yeoman's job. Uh, a specific thank you to Joanne Sinos for working with the Magnolia Library as we had a, a blood club, Red Cross had a blood collection on August 31st, the night before the um, primary of September 1st and uh, she worked uh, with us and we made the transition from the um, blood drive to voting for the following day. Um, with that the library was a or the Red Cross was able to collect 38 units that day that helped save the lives of potentially 114 people. So again thank you Joanne for willing to work with us. Um, I want to thank Melissa for, and maybe others uh, participate in today's collection at the library. The Red Cross is using the library as many other collection uh, volunteer facilities um, have opted not to collect because of the virus. So we've uh, picked up as much as we could to help the Red Cross. We have many blood drives going ahead. Um, I know um, Melissa had mentioned it's very difficult to get appointments, but um, we just, if someone has a pen and paper, I'll rattle these off very quickly. Take me a second, September 16th, September 23rd, October 1st, 12th, 28th, November 9th, November 11th, November 20th, December 8th, and December 30th for collections at the uh, Magnolia Library you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS uh, to make an appointment and you can donate every 56 days. So for those who are, um, haven't donated that, that often, every 56 days you can roll up your sleeve and donate uh, a unit of blood. So I want to thank um, everyone for participating. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, Councilor Nolan. 
I just want to thank the administration and the Department of Public Works for all the work they've done around the city. Um, sometimes a thankless job. They've done a lot of work. And um, kudos. Thank you, Sean. Councilor Gilman. Thank you. Um, I um, also support what Councilor Nolan just said. Thank you, Public Works and all city staff members. Much appreciated. Um, I did want to just mention to everyone that tomorrow night um, we're going to have a, some focus groups uh, socially distanced at uh, Plum Cove Beach. Um, if, and what this is, is, is to, to begin some just general conversations about demographic interests of quarry use and priorities um, as we get more prepared to have some Zoom best practice sessions. So uh, they're gonna be small, they're gonna be socially distanced, just like our, our uh, special council permit meetings. And um, helping facilitate will be Les Bartlett and Heather Atwood. And I will be the one that's greeting people and making sure that they're socially distanced and I will take the third group if, if need be. And um, so A through M is 615, if your last name begins with A through M. And uh, 7 p.m. is N through Z. And like I said, they're just informal listening sessions. Everything is gonna be scribed um, verbatim. And then we will communicate the information. But I also wanted to make sure that the public was aware as our councils that we're also doing a survey monkey that will replicate the same questions that we're gonna be asking tomorrow. And we will be sending that out via the Gloucester Daily Times in the weeks ahead, just to kind of pepper people and find out how people are feeling about this and it will help give us some shape to what the next step is. So it's all good stuff. It's hard to really get our arms around it when we are trying so hard to be socially distanced and concerned about um, you know, wearing masks and everything. And I will rest assured that everything will be very safe tomorrow. Um, and um, and I, I'm excited. I know that when we get to the next step of doing some best practice conversations, um, the mayor is gonna be a panelist, Les Bartlett's gonna be a panelist, and Caroline King, a former Gloucester High School student who now attends BC, she wrote her junior thesis on quarry management. So it's kind of cool. She'll be able to show us her um, video that she did and get a feel for the history of the quarries from a millennial who's uh, in college right now. So I'm excited and I hope you are all too. And I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of this. So thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, and last but not least is myself. Um, I have nothing. I just want to say kudos to the clerk's office for running a very smooth uh, primary. It was a really good job, everybody. The poll workers were um, very, very good. I went to walk around to thank everybody and was told I wasn't allowed to walk around through the building, um, which I respected. And I just gave a quick shout to everybody from the as I was leaving the, the door. Um, so great job to not only the clerk's office, uh, but to all the poll workers too. I know it's stressful for every one of them. Uh, most of them are elderly or, you know, they, they're retired and they do this for um, their own benefit and for the city's benefit. So um, thank you guys for the poll workers for sticking their neck out and uh, making sure everybody got through this safely. So, um, and uh, I think that is all for this evening. Um, with that being said, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Been moved and seconded. Second. 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 Councillor Cox. Yes. Councillor Gilman. Yes. Councillor Holmgren. Oops. Yes. Councillor LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor McCarthy. Yes. Councillor Memhard. Yes. Thank you. And good night. Councillor Nolan. Yes. Councillor O'Hara. You still with us, Jamie? I see you. He looks frozen. He looks frozen. All right. And Giving blood. Pat. And Councilor Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and again, also thank you to the city clerk 
and all the staff for wonderful work on the uh, primary. All right, on a motion to adjourn, passes eight in favor, one frozen. <laughs> all right, everybody, we are adjourned. Have a good night. Have a Thank great you, night. Everyone.